Hey friends, Dean here. Before we get you on to your episode, I want to take a moment to invite you to our next virtual online trivia night. Wednesday, May 13th at 8 p.m. Join us either on our Facebook group or on our YouTube page for three rounds of fun trivia, music questions, movie questions, general knowledge questions. It'll be a fun time and a chance to win some prizes and have just a good relaxing night uh, of some trivia at, at home. You don't even have to go out for it. So don't forget, Wednesday, March 13th at 8 p.m., Join us on our Facebook group or YouTube for three rounds of fun virtual online trivia. We'll see you there. In this quick hit, we're taking a look at the career of one of horror's most prolific authors and also some highlighted film adaptations of his work. Stay tuned. You're listening to a 3324 podcast quick hit with Dean Legiro, where Dean shares stories and trivia about his favorite chart hits, actors, movies, and more. Welcome, friends, to this October Spooktober quick hit. My name is Dean. Thank you for joining me. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. So if you would, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. New quick hits come out every Monday. And our full-length episodes come out every Thursday. So join us for both of those, won't you? Stephen King was born in Portland, Maine in September of 1947. Taking an interest in the EC Comics series Tales from the Crypt in the 60s, Stephen developed an affinity for horror stories and started writing his own short stories, even selling some to his classmates at school. Graduating from the University of Maine in 1970 with her certificate of teaching in hand, Stephen was not able to find any work immediately and supplemented his income by writing short stories for magazines until he finally landed a teaching job in 1971. Stephen would continue writing and would expand his craft into full-length novels, which those went largely unpublished until 1973 when Carrie would be picked up by Doubleday Publishing. The original story idea for Carrie was literally tossed in the trash until King's wife, Tabitha, fished it out of the garbage and encouraged him to continue the story. Well, as we know, that was a hit, and it would be made into a film in 1976. Stephen King was off and running. Salem's Lot was next, followed by The Shining. Now, in order to see if his newfound success was the result of luck or skill, Stephen King created the pseudonym Richard Bachman, which he would use for a few short stories and novels. He wanted to see if he could replicate his performance without his, his brand name being out there. That name, Richard Bachman, was partly inspired by Randy Bachman, who, if you're a music fan, you may know from the 60s group The Guess Who, and in the 70s as the leader of Bachman-Turner Overdrive, uh, they had a few hits, uh, most notably that song, You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet. Well, it wasn't long before a sharp-eyed bookstore clerk noticed the uncanny similarities in the writing style of both authors, and then Richard Bachman's novel writing career would come to an end. Some Bachman titles that you may be familiar with include Thinner and The Running Man. King's 1989 novel, The Dark Half, would kind of be a response to the outing of Richard Bachman and his subsequent quote-unquote death. On June 19, 1999, Stephen King was walking on Route 5 in Lovell, Maine. He was struck by a minivan and sustained considerable injuries, including a collapsed lung. But after five operations in 10 days and many sessions in physical therapy, King was back at work finishing his memoir called On Writing. Throughout King's very prolific writing career, including 63 novels and close to 200 short stories, he would also receive 15 Bram Stoker Awards for Superior Achievement in Horror Writing and six British Fantasy Awards, and other accolades too numerous to list here. But suffice to say, Stephen King is regarded as the standard bearer in modern horror writing. For most authors, that would certainly be enough. But King also has written some well-known conventional fiction titles as well, among them The Green Mile, The Colorado Kid, Joyride, and the novella Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption. Next up, we'll talk about some of the notable film and TV adaptations of Stephen King's work. We'll be right back. With the success of the film version of Carrie in 1976, a Stephen King novel would not be on the big screen again until 1980 and Stanley Kubrick's vision of The Shining. But TV would be the first medium that would take on longer form versions of adapting King's work with a two-part miniseries in 1979 of Salem's Lot. The 90s would see a bumper crop of notable television attempts at adapting King's novels, 
starting in 1990 with It, Tommyknockers in 1993, The Stand in 94, and The Langoliers in 95. Also in the 90s were a bunch of original miniseries that Stephen King wrote that were not novels or stories, like The Golden Years and Storm of the Century. There are almost too many film adaptations of Stephen King novels to list, and with varying degrees of success at the box office, but in addition to Carrie and The Shining, some of King's most popular novels and stories that made the jump to the silver screen include The Shawshank Redemption, The Green Mile, The Running Man, The Dead Zone, Stand By Me, An Apt Pupil, among many others. And now there are even remakes of, of King's films and, mini, and TV miniseries being made with the likes of Carrie, The Stand, and It, re-terrifying new audiences and new versions of Salem's Lot and Running Man in the works as well. No doubt. Stephen King has left a mark not only on literature, but on TV and filmmaking as well, sending chills down our spine with each turn of the page or jump scare in the theater. Truly a career fit for a king. This has been Dean, and this has been your 3324 Quick Hit for the Week. This has been a 3324 Podcast Quick Hit. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. So please like, subscribe, and rate to become a part of the 3324 family. Your feedback is important, so please make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at 3324podcast and on Twitter at 3324p to join the conversation. 